Today I'm going to talk on threefold training and development of three mindfulness skills. Explained by Buddha. Our Lord Buddha taught noble teachings of the Dharma for 45 years on many, on many occasions regarding many topics, spiritual development, moral development, intellectual development, and also social development including some complex issues that fascinate human mind, such as Buddhist theology, and even Genesis. Regarding the wall, how the walls Emerge and how the world destroy, how the world again re emerge, etc. And all his teachings are brought in white because his wisdom is deep beyond measure. Unfathomable depth of the Buddha's teaching can be seen in witness only by a person who is well versed and expert in Pali language and Buddhist text. Translation alone is not enough because Pali words are sometimes very tricky to translate into simple English. For example, most of you are quite familiar with three terms, anaja, yoga, and anatta. Many interpret a nature as impermanent, Doga as suffering, another no soul, no self. They don't reflect the actual meaning of the Pali words in complete detail because the, the term nature according to definitions in Buddhist text, is something which arises and then subject to passing away. In Pali, let me call what it said, Hodwa Abha Vatina, a nature. It is a nature because, because having arisen, it disappears. That's why it's called our nature. Regarding the, the term dukkha, many try to translate as suffering, but that interpretation is not sufficient because it has a wider connotation. The term dukkha according to definition in Buddhist text, it's very simple. To quote Palit, Obada Vaya Pripil Nati Na Dukkha. It is Dukkha because it is always torture and chained by constant process of arising and passing. So in this sense, Dukkha's 
can mean many things, not only our body and our very existence, all those living beings, also non-living beings, including the world we live in. Everything is subject to rising and passing. Everything which is being conditioned by the constant rising and passing can be defined as dukkha. So, to give the proper and complete definition of the dukkha is quite tricky. Suffering alone is not enough translation. In the same way, regarding the term anatta, Buddhist texts are very simple and clear. <clears throat> To quote what is said in the text, Awasa Wudnatina Anatta. It is anatta because it doesn't happen according to one's wish and one's manipulation. A means not. Wasa means wish or power or manipulation. What now means something which happens, something which doesn't happen according to one's own wish and one's own power and manipulated power. So it means something that takes its own course. It's a nata. So according to this definition and explanation, Paul and Buddhist text, no soul, no self. It's not a complete translation. I'm saying this because Buddha's teaching regarding spiritual development is full of wonderful Bali words. Among such words, there are quite interesting words used in Buddhist texts, such as Samadhi Nimeta, Animeta Jedo Samadhi, um, Vimokha and Ambibayana. So far, I haven't found any proper interpretation which reflect the meaning of those Bali words. So we, I have to try uh, the best and simple expression of the language so that what us meaning, uh, what us teaching can be ref reflected properly and appropriately. Today I'm going to talk about threefold training, development of budgets, more about you, buses, extraordinary, more about you. Developing of the mind and buses, advanced, extraordinary mind. Development of wisdom, buses, extraordinary, uh, special wisdom. Of Buddha's teaching, which he taught 45 years, it can be summarized only in three words. Sometimes Buddha used to refer as one word. So all of the Buddha's teaching, even though they are numerous and recorded in Thick volumes of Buddhist texts can be summarized in three words. What are those three words? The first word is called a silat, more bhajut. Bhajut's character of a person. And the second word is called samadhi. Samadhi is. Most people translated 
it as a concentration. It is mental integrity characterized by a stable mind and strong mind, pure mind. And the third word is called the Panya, wisdom. So these three words are the major purpose of Pura's teaching. All his teachings aim at developing more about Jews and mental power, no as concentration and wisdom. By means of moral development, emphasis, emphasis on moral development. Pura's teachings are uh, wholesome in the beginning, with emphasis on development of samadhi, concentration, mental calm, and mental peace, and mental stability. His teachings are. Uh, Hold sound in the middle with emphasis on development of wars town. Pura's teachings are wholesome in the end. So Pura's teachings are wholesome and beneficial and blessed and all phases in the beginning phase of his teaching and the middle phase of his teaching and the final phase of his, his teaching. Also, for the practitioner of the Dhamma, if a person sincerely follows his teaching, he will develop more about Jews. Thus, transform himself into a pious and mature person. He will develop himself, especially his mind, into a stable, peaceful mind, so that he live life in peace and joy. If a person follows Buddha's teaching, practice as instructed, he will transform into a very wonderful wise man whose wisdom will be ready to face all goods and bad situations of life. By means of the wisdom, he will be able to live through all situations of life without feeling too much suffering, too much mental pain. These are brief explanations of Pura's teaching. So you have to know that Pura's teaching, even though numerously recorded in Buddhist texts and various sutras on various topics, can be summarized onto three major words because they are very important objectives of the Buddha's teaching, development of the moral virtues, development of the mental peace and calm, characterized by concentration, development of wisdom, characterized by penetrating into the true nature of things and thus having a liberated intellect and liberated knowledge, which is not pedal and not chained by ego and, and defilements. How wonderful it is to learn that Pura's teachings are very simple and only three in short, more virtues and mental calm and peace, stability and wisdom.
in today's discourse, Bora explained about those kind of triple training. Now let me refer to what Bora has said in the discourse more than <clears throat> 3,000 years ago. <clears throat> Saita ima bekwe seka. Disciples, there are three trainings to be trained by you. Kadama de so. What are those three trainings? Adi sila seka. Training for development of the moral virtues and extraordinary moral virtues. Adi Jada Seka. Training for development of extraordinary consciousness and extraordinary mind. Adi Binya Seka. Training for development of Extraordinary wars term. But I continue to explain the fast training. Katamaja Begui Adisi La Seka. Disciples, what is Adisi La Seka? Training for development of the special moral virtues. Ida bekwe beku sila wa hodi pazi moka samra samdo hujendi anumati du wuji du biada dawi samadaya sekedi sekha brisu. Here in this world, the disciple trying to maintain more precepts. If he is a layman, he trying to maintain basic standard of moral preserves, such as five moral preserves in daily life. Occasionally, on Saturday days of the Buddhist Ubosta, known as the Sabbath day, he observed eight preserves. If he uh, is a Monk, he maintained Patimoka Samra Sila, those 227 monastic codes. Ajara Gotra Sampano, he always maintained good physical and body conduct. He always keep the mind guarded from our wholesome mental state. And no matter who would you do, but yeah, that's how we. A disciple always have the right understanding to refrain even small amount of wrongdoings. Samadaya Sekhdi Sekhabri do. Once a disciple made commitment to observe the precepts, he trying to keep those precepts unbroken and pure. A young Wojdi Bakwe, a Dsila Sekha. Disciple, this is a training for development of more virtues and extra more virtues. As I have explained in this translation, lemons, precepts, lemons, more virtues are also included. In this case, a lemons, more virtues may be a little bit lower if you compare it to monastic preserves, but they serve the same purpose. They can lead to the same benefits of developing joy, developing 
guilt free, remorse free mind and developing concentration in, in mental calm if he practice meditation. And unbroken moral precepts, which a disciple observe, can lead to development of further progress on the spiritual path. What is important for a layman in observing his preserve is that the main objective and purpose is to attain up to the Nibbana, part in fruition knowledge in Nibbana. He must have this kind of purpose and objective in the mind when he ob is observing the moral preserves. Normally, if a person can maintain moral preserves, basically, all the other worldly happiness and privilege are easy to get, such as being revolved in the heaven, being revolved back into human life, and being revolved with good conditions into good social environments and good families. These are very easy and normal consequence if a person can keep more preserves always. So his intention must be to attain spiritual progress up to the attainment of the path and fruition knowledge and attainment of the cessation of suffering by being able to enter into the Nibbana tattooed. This itself will be called a Tisila Tsika, training for development of the extraordinary more about shoes. If a disciple is a monk, his moral precepts and observation of the monastic rules and goals will lead to attaining of the body and fruition knowledge on the spiritual path. This briefly is a Tisila Sekha, training for special moral virtues. Anyone with a sincere faith and commitment can fulfill this training. In this retreat, all meditators have already fulfilled this fast training because they keep a precepts unbroken all the time. So this fast training is fulfilled. You have to develop wonderful appreciation and joy for your ability to observe this preserve and this fast noble training set by the Buddha. Now the second training. Kadamaja Bhikkhui Adi Jaita Sikha. What disciple is the training for development of the extraordinary special mind? Could I explain? Ida Bhikkhui Bhikkhu Uwe Jiwa Kami 
Men the hindrance and obstacle, men the unwholesome states. The mind develop to a sustain state of concentration and mindfulness. Where he can remain in peace and come by entering into the first state of the advanced consciousness known as jhana. Vidaka vijarana upadma avidaka avijarana ijatan samdharana chitato ikoti vavan dutiyan jhana upasam bhaja vid He further proceed to a second jhana where there is no more wandering thoughts, where there is no more subsequent thoughts, uh, which is clean, clear and joyous, uh, which is uh, generated by the, the fast uh, jhana concentration. It means that when a person enter into Second jhana, wandering thoughts, initial thoughts, and subsequent thoughts cease to appear. We may not achieve that state far, that state, but we don't have to be disappointed. So to explain what Buddha said, Buddha, you should explain in this discourse about the poor jhanas. This may seem a bit out of reach for ordinary meditator, but we don't need to this why. Why? I want to explain to you. The first process is ordinary mind. Ordinary mind is known as the theta. And the, the second mind, uh, next advanced degree of the mind is called a dictator, special mind, special consciousness. Most meditators are referred to in Buddhist text as manobhavniya. Manobhavniya means mental developer. All the meditators are referred to as mental developer who are trying to develop their mind, their consciousness. Sometimes it is referred to as a dicheta manuyoso beku, a disciple who is trying to develop extraordinary consciousness. Normal consciousness, we already have this one, which is very much restless. Wandering, complaining, protesting, and washing this and that, craving and holding on to this and that, thinking this and that aimlessly. It's like a wandering clouds where there is no more, no from ground. If you look at the clouds on the mount, on the sky, you see clouds and barrier formations. They are not stable because they have no foundation to firmly base. They are located on boundless space. 
where there is no material things. Material things are occupants of the space. In empty space, material things occupy, like the world we live in. The world we live in, we, we thought this world is very stable, very strong. Actually not. Perhaps some of you may have seen the photos of this planet art taken from satellite. You see our planets, it's like a ball, a Chinese lantern hanging on the space precariously. Our life also the same thing. Our mind also the same thing. Our mind is also wandering all the time, aimlessly, causing a lot of problems. Mental training is a very important process. So, a meditator is referred to Manoba, a mind developer, consciousness developer, very wonderful term, used in Buddhist text. You are not yogis. Yogis is just only part, another body word. And uh, yoga, e, yoga means effort. E means the one who has, the one who has effort, the one who is making effort. But Manobhavaniya is much more relevant and beautiful term, which reflects what you are doing. So mind development is very important training in Buddhist text. Mind developing one's mind through meditation. The mind slowly change its normal patterns of being restless and being attached to this and that. Because with mindfulness meditation, the mind becomes calm. The inside knowledge slowly develops. One starts seeing clearly that there's no Rova, there's no June, there's no journey. Just only mind and body constantly arising and passing. And the noting mind is not robots, not Jenny. And the object being noted is not belonging to Jenny and not belonging to Richard, etc. You will see that very clearly. And this way, you will be no longer sad, no longer angry, if your meditation slowly progress. This is how a dictator, special consciousness happens. Even though Buddha explained in this discourse, a dictator as development of the four jhanas, don't be disappointed. Buddha just only explained the highest level of the consciousness in this case. Even that explanation is not complete because Buddha has explained in many discourse to cover all the extraordinary consciousness. In those other discourse, Buddha mentioned path and fruition knowledge, the mind of a progressive meditator and the mind of enlightened saints who have attained the, up to the fourth stage of enlightenment are called a digital. In order to clarify this, I would like to quote what, what is said in Buddhist texts and Buddhist commentaries. First of all, we pass not Chaita, the mind which is developed, being developed through inside meditation. It's called a dictator, special mind. You are not having already, you are already having this kind of special consciousness and special mind. Even though it is not in the jhana state. So development of the special consciousness can be acquired through practice of vipassana meditation. This is what we all need to understand. 
Once we understand this, then our practice will be more inspiring and more relevant to what Buddha has said in Buddhist texts. This special consciousness is the pathway to liberation of the mind, the pathway to attain liberation of the mind and liberation of the intellect. When we are developing this special consciousness, we need to understand many skills and techniques set by Buddha himself. That's what I am going to talk about today. Not only three word training, it's called the development of the three skills. Now let me explain what Buddha has said. A DJ da Manuyo de na Bikwe Bikuna. Dini Nimedani Gali na Gala Manasi ga Dabani. Disciple here in the war in the war, a Meridida, who is trying to develop special consciousness should perform three kinds of skill from time to time as necessary. To simplify this, it means that a meditator occasionally applies three skills during his meditation for development of the special consciousness. It's very simple. That's what Buddha has said. The first skill, the first test he has to do is Kali na kalan smadi nimeda manasi gadapa. He should, the marida should focus on the object of meditation so that concentration develops. This is the first skill Buddha mentioned. Kali na galam pekha nimeda manasi gadapa. Sometimes, depending on the conditions, a meditator should apply inspiration and supporting of the mind. Kali na galam ubeka nimeda manasi gadapa. Occasionally, a meditator should apply the balancing, relax at of practice to his meditation practice. So all together, three skills mentioned by the Buddha. The first key is development key by keeping the mind focused on meditation object or on meditation generally. And the second ski is supportive ski. In case the mind becomes slack, sluggish and slacking. And the third ski is relaxed ski, balancing ski. These instructions are very important. Most meditators, including myself, thought that a meditator should continuously strive and make ardent effort in practicing meditation. But Bora is very skillful and far sighted. He knows the conditions of consciousness. Consciousness or the mind is not always smooth, not always accepted. Sometimes it is slow and slacking. Sometimes 
it lacks interest and the brightest. Sometimes it will resist. It will wander off. And then sometimes it will even want to stop to practice. So there are various conditions, like the way we drive the car. Driving the car is okay, but there are other conditions. Traffic condition, weather, the driver's health, and the conditions of the car. All these factors are need to be taken into account. Only when supportive factors are conducive and then driving will be smooth and progressive. In the same way, in meditation, a meditator's mind is main important thing. Also, his physical health condition are uh, another factor. And also the surrounding social environment is also very important. That's why in meditation center, it is strictly imposed the rule of the no silence, the rule of no visitors, no talking. Because by having this kind of the strict rules and regulation, it will be a good supportive environment to remain calm and focused and one's practice without distraction. A person's health is also very important. During meditation, if a yogi, a mind developer, has sudden physical condition, he will not be able to focus on the practice unless he is a very strong, he has been a strong, committed meditator who have developed mindfulness key all those long years. For those who have a very strong experience in mindfulness practice, regardless of their health condition, they can remain agitated. They may remain agitated. It's a very wonderful benefit of the mindfulness meditation. I see a lot of the suffering people because they don't practice meditation. They have never experienced, they have no knowledge of meditation. Even yesterday, I had a call from New York, from a devotee who is only 50 years old. Her younger sister, who is about only 41, is diagnosed with the cancer, stage four cancer. She's now devastated. She doesn't know what to do. I have a, such an experience with the people who are suffering, who are suffering from terminal illness. One incident is very notable. She is also a lady about 57 years old, still having had good times with a hard, well paid job and good family. She was diagnosed with the cancer. And for the first three weeks, she's crying nonstop. She doesn't know what to do. The doctors told her, prosperity are not good. Only maybe six or eight months. At the most, she's going to be alive. She doesn't know what to do. So she just crying, feeling sad. Even though her husband comfort her, she doesn't find peace and relief. But later on, she decided to practice meditation very, very seriously and very urgently. She came to practice meditation while I was in Singapore. And she became a very committed meditator. Most of the time she meditated, except when she is doing uh, important compulsory routines. She even stopped the telephone. Stopped answering the telephone. She doesn't, she no longer use telephone except with the 
important family member. She gave away all her possession and she decided to face the debt peacefully and courageously. And she practiced meditation very wonderfully. Tauda's prognosis of six months became six years. She lived six years without feeling sadness or grief, without feeling pain. She faced until final hours, everything, all the physical suffering, peacefully and courageously through mindfulness. This is one incident. The other incident also the same thing. Kwan Lin was in Singapore, a lady about the same years of age. She has already cancer. She has been taking medication, but her cancer is come back, cells grow back, even though she's taking medicine. So she has to take another treatment. This time she called us, crying on the phone. I told her, just seek help and relief through the meditation. She's not interested. She just only plead with me, what can I help? Because her son is still in college and not finishing yet. She doesn't want to die. So I just repeat my encouragement to come and practice meditation with the dedication and seriousness. She ignored, she died within one year. So meditation is very wonderful in many ways. These are practical experience I have seen with my eye, how special consciousness, how this special consciousness training, development of special consciousness training is very wonderful training. It's not about attaining of jhana, as explained in this course. It is about development of the special mind, which is resilience, so strong and unshakable by bad bodily condition and social conditions. How wonderful it is. Your practice of Vipassana meditation can immunize or can give some power of strong immunity against mental suffering. It help you, it help us to be able to go with physical suffering also, even though we may not be able to overcome physical suffering completely. Because Buddha himself, all enlightenment themselves include that. As long as they have the body, they have to live through physical pain and physical suffering, but they no longer suffer mentally. This is how liberation of suffering can be defined and explained in a more simple way. This is go, which Buddha mentioned about development of three skills, is very detailed and needs a lot of explanation. We may have to continue explaining this. So let me go back to the development of the the Tata training. Adipinya Sekha. Buddha said, Katamaja Bhikkhu Adipinya Sekha. What is the training for development of the special wisdom? Ida Bhikkhu Bhikkhu Idan Dokandi Yatabu Dan Bacha Nadi. Here in this war, a meditator clearly knows that this mental and physical phenomena is just dukkha. He knows dukkha as it is. You already understand. Every moment of your mindfulness, you see rising and falling of your brooming, or in breath or out breath, or wandering thoughts, or the hearing sound. They are 
not stable. They don't last even for a fraction of a second. They just come and pass. They just arise and pass very quickly. This clearly shows is that nothing is stable. There's no way for you to hold on to. Even though we're trying to hold on to our thoughts, our pains, this is my pain, I'm suffering so much, I have an itching sensation in my neck, etc. They're trying to identify. I have wandering thoughts, my mind is wandering back and forth to my home and to my family, to my work, etc. Because we're trying to hold on to our thoughts as our own. Once you can relax your whole to those wandering thoughts and pain, as nobody is pain, nobody is wandering thoughts, just only wandering thoughts, just only insignificant mental states and insignificant pain that neck you all the time, then you will be able to ignore. Once you are able to ignore with the impersonal mindfulness and and you, can, you will be able to let go of it. Being able to let go is very important training, which we all need to develop. This is what Adipinya means. By continual and consistent mindfulness, that wonderful ability of the mind to see things as they truly are, will develop. This is called what, this is what Adipinya means. This is called a special wisdom. And what I'm going to explain, ayyan dukha samudhyo di yata buddham machanayani. This is the cause of the dukkha. The cause of dukkha is the attachment. Attachment to our pain, as me and my pain. Attachment to our thoughts. I'm in thinking. I'm in planning. I wish this and that. I'm in theorizing and I'm in just complaining, etc. This attachment is also the cause of unnecessary suffering. Buddha instruct us to know this as the cause, this attachment as the main culprit of unnecessary suffering. This detachment, this letting go, is the cessation of suffering. Very simple. The moment you are able to let go, the moment you are able to remove that attachment, unnecessary, unnecessary suffering will stop. Ayan dukha nirora gamini di nadi. This is the pathway to cessation of suffering, to stopping of suffering. That's a meditator knows truthfully. So what's that? What's that? The pathway to stop suffering, to end suffering. It's your practice. The practice you are doing, the precept you are taking, the mindfulness you are having, all these are the parts, the noble parts. They are not to be found in Buddhist texts. They are to be found in your mind, in your consciousness, in your private aggregates. It's very wonderful. Even myself, before I practice meditation, thought that the noble eightfold parts are to be found in Buddhist texts. <coughs> Actually not. They are to be developed within ourselves based on our five aggregates, by using our mind. In this case, not ordinary mind, just only mindfulness mind, special mind. You transform your mind into special mind. To purify the mind's pollutants, you use the mind. In this case, the mind is not ordinary mind. In this case, the water is not ordinary water, pure water, pure mind known as the mindfulness or satipatthana or sati. Ayyan wojti bhikwe adipenya sekha. Disciple, this is what's called 
training for development of the special wisdom. Now let me explain a little bit more so that you can be inspired. This Adibhinya is explained in Buddhist text. Now let me go, what is it, what is it said in the text? Vipassana, Padika, Tilakna, Brega, Higa, Banya, Adibhinya. The knowledge which can clearly and distinctively see three inherent characteristics which comes through the foundations of vipassana meditation is called atipinya. Now let me simplify further. The inside knowledge which a meditator can develop in the course of mindfulness meditation is called atipinya, special wisdom. Because by means of developing that special inside knowledge, the mind start clearly, clearly and distinctively seeing the inherent natures of all the mental phenomena and physical phenomena as a nature, something which has arisen and just passed away immediately. Dokka, something which is always characterized by arising and passing. Another which has been its own accord, not according to one's own manipulation, not one according to one's own wish. This is very clearly understandable, especially when you are dealing with the pain. Nobody wants the pain. Nobody has the power to command, go away. I don't want you. This is my own body. You have no right to be here. You cannot see the pain like this. The pain will arise in, in the body because it is a part of the body a part of our very existence. As long as there's the body and pains will arise and will disappear. And sometimes in chronic, in case of the chronic pains and chronic illness, they will be there for long. It is very important to have this mindful training, mindful practice training, so that one will be able to cope with the pain, to handle the pain, to handle all the mental emotion. This is how a deep yard, developing all the special wisdom can help you, can benefit you a lot in many ways. Buddha's teachings are very much realistic and based on practicality and result oriented. That's why Buddha's teachings are always referred to as Vipichawara, teaching of analysis, not teaching based on faith and speculation. If you follow Buddha's teaching, she will be able to develop your moral virtues easily and your consciousness. Ordinary consciousness you have is very problematic, which causes a lot of suffering, a lot of problems in daily life, not only for oneself, but also for other people as well. Development of special consciousness can be done through samatha meditation and vipassana meditation. Please know that and remind yourself, development of the special consciousness is to be done by practice of meditation. 
not by having faith in Buddha alone. Now the development of the special wisdom also to be acquired, to be developed through mindfulness meditation, vipassana meditation. In this discourse, Buddha only simply and briefly explained what is a dipinya. According to this discourse, a dipinya is the knowledge to see the truth, four noble truths. These four noble truths are not in Buddhist texts. They are in our body, to discover in our body. If we practice uh, Vipassana meditation, the noble truths will be unfolded. They will unfold themselves when inside knowledge develops. Develop more, development of inside knowledge is not to expect. It is to be practiced continuously. In practice of meditation, we need to maintain uninterrupted mindfulness. If our mindfulness and our noting is uninterrupted and consistent, the mindfulness will become very strong and other necessary factors will develop slowly. Then, full premium of these three threefold trainer will be achieved. May all of you be able to fulfill these threefold training, development of the moral virtues, development of the special extraordinary consciousness, development of the special wisdom in your lifetime. May you be successful in your practice.